Okay, welcome everybody to this evening's ACY Securities webinar, Fox Trade and Live Market Analysis. Thank you for your patience. All right, so what's coming up this week? Tonight is Live Market Analysis. Tomorrow evening, the third at 7 p.m. Senior time, we'll be going through a review of last month. Patterns that forms. Can you learn anything from that in hindsight for your foresight trading as you're moving forward? And then on Thursday, we've got more live market analysis. Okay, on the 4th of May. All right, so before we get into it, if you can read through the disclaimer, that would be great. If you're on our YouTube live stream, I cannot see the chat, but you're more than welcome to watch. But uh, just follow the link and you can come into the webinar and then ask questions. So more than welcome to join us. So everyone, please read through the disclaimer. All right, let's move along. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Duncan Cooper. I'm the Senior Market Strategist and Trading Mentor here at ACY Securities. And I'm a full-time Forex trader. I've been trading for more than 15 years and mentoring for more than 10. If you want to contact me, my email is there on screen. I just want to double check. Hopefully I'm coming through okay because I'm getting a couple of delayed signals from my webinar software. Hopefully I'm coming through okay. If you want to contact me, my email is on screen, duncan.cooperacy.com. Through the week, you can connect with on our website, acy.com, go to the market news tab, find my analysis there. Our YouTube channel, ACY Securities Australia, find my videos there, and you can connect with me personally on Twitter and LinkedIn. And through the week in our Telegram channel, if you want to get connected to, into that, contact Nathan Bray, his email is at the bottom. I'll put his email in the chat momentarily for any assistance. If you want to get my chart layouts and templates for MT4, then contact Nathan too. So I'll put his details in the chat. So if you want to get my chart layouts and templates, set up a demo account or any questions about a live account, just contact Nathan. His details are there. All right, let's get into first up the news tonight. He's here. Now let's talk about the news for the week because it's had a volatile week. We've already had a little bit of volatility from the US news on the midnight that's gone. More volatility on the Aussie pairs when they raised interest rates. So this week's very much monetary policy. We did have last Friday a very less than hawkish view that the market felt from the Bank of Japan and pairs to the end of being moving up. Coming up, uh, more information maybe about interest rates, 9.20 p.m. for the Aussie from the Governor Low speaking. Midnight tonight, we've got the U.S. jobs job openings. In the morning, New Zealand unemployment figures. Uh, but the more important ones coming up are into the morning of Thursday. So I'm just going to skip some of these, but you can go in and have a look at Fox Factory at the bigger. The other items that I may be just skipping over there is the 80% non-farm block change figures but uh, in the morning of thursday we got the u.s interest rate decision for a.m in the evening of thursday we got the eurozone interest rate decision at 10 15 p.m and then the policy press conference statement at 10 45 all right so thursday is going to be highly volatile early morning late in the evening and you know there are other u.s news items there that could drive the market as well so lots of items coming out we do seem to have a little bit of a US dollar bid at the moment. So maybe they're preempting, the market's preempting uh, positive information from the US releases through the week. So be aware of what's coming out. And also we have the US job figures on Friday, right? So lots of news items there to consider. Okay, let's get to the charts. We may just start on the dollar index. This is the weekly look. So for the last three weeks, we've been holding down there on weekly supports. Tried to move below weekly support there. Out of three weeks, two of the weeks we've traded into it, but back up and we've actually traded above those last two weeks there. I think if my eyes can correctly look at that chart properly, the day chart will tell us better. 
All right, so weekly supports at 101.28, and we may be just trying to put in a higher top here. We've got a higher bottom, so there is definitely a sniff of a reversal there. And I'm going to my MACD charts. There is a little bit of maybe positive divergence here. All right, and we're going to see the opposite, on, I'm sure, on the euro dollar. Euro dollar bit of negative divergence there. All right. So maybe we've got a bit of a change afoot, maybe a bottom coming in there on the US dollar. Now the stock market, S&P 500, we've been having, let me go to my other charts. We've been having, I think it's the, I don't really look at the share market too much, but I believe some of the headlines I've been seeing we're having there. Result figure time for the share market. That's been popping up the market, but this colored area on the S&P 500 here is these weekly highs. And on the monthly charts, you know, that's that's the move down from where my mouse is, that top to bottom. This is all just retracing back up within that monthly drop. So we don't really see a trend change there. It's still within that large range fractionally above the 79 level and the weekly tops here that the market keeps moving up if we're going to get a bull market where well, you need to clear those tops all right we keep failing at those tops to still every chance that the stock market can once more decline all right it's not very friendly at the moment that he did trade down to a lower bottom on the day chart there and then to come up to a higher top. Did reject though, so it's just rejecting the top area up here at one at 41.94. So we are at the top of the range. So you need to make a decision if you'd like to trade the indices, top of the range there. You know, if you're right, if the thing's going to be range bound, this could just stay range bound. It could just move down to support and come back up to resistance once more for the rest of the year if it wants to. At the moment, we're at clear resistance. So if you'd like to trade the indices, maybe it's time for you to think about what is your setup to trade down from the top. From a, just a simple double top here, minor double top, or even a triple top, quadruple top here, a break of a candlestick low, just simply from a day chart perspective is potentially confirming the reversal, stop above the high, or maybe stop above this final high, could be a trigger for a sell to see whether this starts to decline back down. All right. All right, let's have a look. First of all, we might do the euro pairs and then go into the pound pairs, euro dollar. Day chart. And, you know, we're very high up within the range of last year. This is the candle of last year. Call it in for you. Last year's training range. 79% of that whole range is at 110.75, where we've tested twice. We tested last week. Could not hold up there. You can see that kind of uh, inverted, not a perfect hammer. Bodies may be fractionally a bit large for an inverted hammer, but close to showing you some rejection there. We can't maintain ourselves above that weak top. So are we, you know, maybe we, the trend hasn't changed because that's the higher top, that's the higher bottom on the weekly. But we're very high up within the pricing of last year. So that's why it can't really move up too high, struggling between the buyers and the sellers. Now, I don't know if we're topping out there. Maybe we just have a couple of weeks down, or maybe we get a significant reversal. I know we can often get a significant reversal at the 79% level, and we, we can see quite clearly there that we're hitting it, and the weekly level there just to the left, 110.33 on the day chart here. My dog can be quiet. You know, it's heavy going up there at 110.33. The high of yesterday was at 110.33. So the market's clearly watching uh, 110.33 for resistance and support is where we're at right now, 109.73. All right. So let's just drop it down to the four hour chart. As I said to you before, quick move back to my MACD chart. There's some negative divergence there on the day chart. 
And on the four-hour chart, we've seen the same thing. When we spiked up last week, some divergence there. And then four-hour mark these down. So from an indicator point of view, it's looking a little bit bearish. At the moment, uh, we have traded today just below last week's low, but we're not committing below it. We're still kind of holding on that day top here. Now, it is rather range bound. It's got an ever so slight downward bias to it. I mean, support can hold here and we can move all the way back up to 110.33. Uh, 110 today clearly was heavy going. So yesterday, that weekly top 110.33 was heavy going. Almost had a 62% retracement. So if we're just mapping what's been going on, get used to what the market's doing in its swings. We had a 79% retracement at weekly resistance yesterday. Today, within the range of yesterday, we've had almost a 62% retracement and then broken the low of last week. So, you know, right now that could be the high of the day. And you could then be looking for a retracement back up within that range to the, say the 62, the 79 level for failure for then another push down today. As, a, as I'm talking though, it is trying, it, you know, as I'm talking, it keeps dipping below, back above that day level of support. So I don't sell into support, you know, I have to sell up higher for the opportunity for price maybe to break down through support. So a failure up here at 110, if you're watching that area, that was a good area to maybe look to uh, click in for a push down. So you could be monitoring for a rally within that range today, see whether you could sell a higher point for the opportunity to break down below support, but don't sell into support. That's most definitely a retail traders trade. Okay. So it's a little bit range bound. Downward bias though there as we get into the intraday charts. Yuri Yen, significant move. We go to the monthly chart and have a look. We're up to, let me just squash this in. We have broken above some, some yearly high here. Significant yearly high over here from 2013. We're testing this area of resistance here where we had this massive drop. We should be monitoring this range here. Get my FIB tool. I'm not that keen to short this at the moment, but I'm not that keen to get long either. It's, you know, until it is at a level of monthly resistance at the moment from that low just here. All right. We're getting up to the high area of the range, not at the seven. 89% level yet, so we could still move higher. But you can see here, we're back to a significant area of consolidation, the base of it. And we could definitely hold there. But from last week's Bank of Japan monetary policy statement, rather dovish tone was received by the market and we've obviously pushed up, dollar yen's pushed up and all pairs to yen have been moving up. This has been especially aggressive in terms of taking out some of those tops. But, you know, in terms of where liquidity is, where the buy orders are for the bigger players to absorb, they're above these tops. So, yes, we're trading above these tops. But I think over the next couple of weeks, you need just to think, step back and have a think about can the market sustain itself above these tops or do we start to trade back below if we start to trade back below that euro dollar starts to sell off you know if that's top if that euro dollar is topping out up there at the 79 percent level of last year's trading range we could start to move back below these tops if we start to move back below these tops just think about it when we were at this price point last time if we traded down I don't know if we're going to get a significant reversal. We could just keep continuing up. We may well hold above these tops, but if we start to not hold above these tops, that was a significant price reversal. All right. Just think where we could go. All right. Often when we break above significant areas, 
we're above there for a week or two and then we start to pull back and move back below them and then you know when price is moving up here closed above here on the month next new month new month came in that would have been a new high for the month for a new month everybody would have been thinking this is going higher all right so at the moment this is the same situation you know can we hold so the weekly trend this is well overextended in any stretch of the imagination if you drew a fib in on the current move let's say that was the range well, we actually had a change in trend down and then reverse. So in actual fact, the FIB extension the other way, we would have had a FIB drawn that way. And we'll be on the 167R. So that's way over it stretched the opposite way in terms of a range. That's why I'm saying, I know it's in an uptrend, but it's at very extreme high prices. It's in the profit area taking. If you're in a long trade, you're in the profit taking area. All right. And yes, we can keep moving up, but do you want to be starting to open a trade for the first time at such high levels? All right. Now, if we're going to continue up, we will have a pullback. So, you know, there's a monthly high that we've moved above at 149.77. There is another monthly high there at 148.39. You need to watch, wait for a pullback if you want to be a buyer and see what, what starts to hold a support. All right. That's not signaling me anything to sell at the moment, unless I wanted to be really aggressive. I could think maybe we're going to stop up there that, you know, long term, back in time. What, what year was it? 2007, 2008 area here, the, the GFC. So we're back up to heights when we had the GFC collapse. All right. Areas maybe where we thought we'd never get back to, but we're obviously back to. Now, not seeing anything here to tell me to sell. We started to form some form of little top, maybe. But if we just had one or two days down and we came back to 149.77 and we started to see support coming in there, well, okay, it's had some form of correction. You could start to look at, you know, can I look to take a trade to the long side? All right. So look at the four hour charts. Four hour charts just had a rather nasty four hour candle. I mean, if you want to trade down from this area, I would wait for four hour structure to show you that you have a downtrend. Because structure on the four hour chart is still a higher bottom to a higher top. All right. I would start to watch, you know, depending on what the rest of the EM pairs do. There's last month's high. This red dashed line is last week's high, last month's high. My lesson on, you know, the range of the month, looking at the range and also looking at the highs and lows of the month, is if we start to struggle to, you know, if we pull back, so for example, if we, we could hold at last month's high move up, but if we pull back, say to that monthly level of support, and then over the next one to two weeks, we start to really struggle to get back above last month's high, then we could start to see a reversal back down the range. Last month's range is there. That's the low, we moved above, the high point, which is to the left, which is actually here. My, my label's to the left, but the high of last month's just here, is we could just retrace back down inside the range of last month to a 62% retracement. There's lots of support there. All right, so we are overextended. I just need to watch at the moment to see what price does. Is it gonna offer the opportunity to buy on a dip? Or are we gonna see some kind of at least intra week kind of reversal down within the month range of last month. You know, all we may, all we may get is, you know, a pull back to the 62 area, these lows here, to find support for then the long term move back up. All right, need some form of correction at some point, really it's overextended. So 
I'm not getting too excited about getting to the long side there. I would be ra rather waiting to see if it offers you a, you know, a nice reversal. So I'm going to keep my fib across that range. If you want to get my monthly levels on your charts, just get in contact with Nathan. That's last month's low. I'm, should they show up on my four hour chart? Last month's low. Once I move above last month's high, just drag up the fib and I'll start to monitor the range if we get a pullback. And I'll be able to show you that on the Aussie dollar today. All right, so we are getting a little bit of a sell off there. You know, if you start to see a four hour downtrend up here, you make a decision whether you want to start to engage. Maybe to trade back down. You know, there's some imbalances here that maybe need to be filled from Friday's move up. Um, all right, there's a whole bunch of imbalances in that area there. All right, to the low of that red candle. So it's very high up, doesn't want to get to that red candle. There we go. All right, we may well come back to the point where we broke above. All right, so you may see an opportunity to get short. You know, we're already it's quite a, getting quite aggressive. We may see tomorrow 151 to be resistance on any rally tomorrow, but if 151 becomes resistance, you know, you need to make a decision. Do you want to trade um, that corrective move back to the downside? I'm not saying the trend's changed, but I think that's overrun and it needs some form of correction. All right, let's just have a quick back to Euro dollars, moving back below 109.73. Did, did anybody entertain getting short up here yesterday, 110.33? I got short, I'm short just underneath 110 at the moment. All right, so look at the pounds. Well, we can start with the pound yen. Now, I did put out on Telegram today. Are we going to create a double top up here? Whenever price rushes up to a significant area, so to the monthly chart, this is a significant monthly top. Well, we had a significant sell off from, there's always the possibility that we can. I want to see what the fib tells me across that range. All right, so in between the 6279, it's not telling me a lot. But when we come up to a significant level, especially when we rush up, okay, there's always the possibility that we're going to fail. Even if we try, just because we trade above does not mean we're going to hold above. All right, you can see this, this rush down here below. That low and that low, that does not mean that we're coming down to here. We can false break and come all the way back up. So we can false break that and move all the way back down. Now, is it telling me that yet? Not yet. Weekly, you know, there's the weekly candle is not going to tell me too much other than the fact we're not holding the gain for the week too much. And we were drawing from that level. Now, what happened yesterday was we didn't actually trade at the actual price of that yesterday. Today, we've managed to push up, but at the moment, if that candle keeps doing what it's doing, it's forming a dark cloud cover. It's false broke. It's taking out some stops at the top, hit the liquidity area. And, you know, we could see a move back down to where we've just broken above here. First, first level would be here at 169.27 if we start to sell off. And I'm just waiting to see if we can break the low of a day to start to confirm the potential of a reversal. What I want to see is, you know, I was looking for a break of yesterday's low to change the structure on the four hour chart. Now, when I was doing my video, possibly we had a lower top forming and I was looking for, you know, a move down to a lower bottom. So at the moment, I'm still looking for the same thing. Can we get a move down to a lower bottom? Can we then see a 79% retracement? Does it start to hold? We could maybe start to see here a little left shoulder head, right shoulder carry on going on there. A little pattern forming at a major level of resistance to maybe start to tell you that we are reversing. Now we only may pull back to what is weekly support at 169.27. Today chart, this is that area here. Or, you know, this could be the high of the year. So these significant price points this is often where you can get a significant move back especially when we get these rush 
large moves up. These large move ups often get filled. See that drop? The prices come back to fill all that area. So that big move up will probably get filled. So the imbalance at the moment, let's just go back to the day chart, have a look, so that one candle. So for our chart, this imbalance, which started here, that's the imbalance area at the moment. All right, we can actually fill all of that area. I'm just looking at the pound dollar on my other screen. It's almost back down to those, that weekly double top area. So that's helping that sell off. All right, so just monitoring for a setup. You could obviously drop to a 15 minute chart if you want to get short, but I don't know, you know, structure hasn't changed yet. So this could just hold here and then move all the way back up and go above the high. I want to see a definite change in structure because we've had a very strong trend on these yen pairs over the last few days. You don't want to be short in the trend, which is up without seeing a clear significant change, at least on a four hour chart. Okay. So to the upside, you could be looking at go back to the four hour chart. So you could draw a fib from that low to that high and look for a dip in here because that four hour trend's still up and it's just coming down to last week's high. So that is this area here. If you're on the buy side, then you're at the 79% level of that four hour range. If we start to hold here and you see a setup to buy, you could be buying here to trade up for another retest of that resistance level. There's two sides of the market there. We could still be on the buy side there and we could still carry it on and up. So you need to work out what side are you on. Whenever I see a false break there of a significant resistance area, I instantly swing to the failure side of the market. But that could hold there. You could be buying right now at the 79 level, stop below yesterday's low, looking for that to move back up to retest the high of today. All right. So what side of the market do you think that's heading towards at the moment? All right. So have a look at the you know, pound pairs are highly correlated, pound yen, pound dollar. So you can monitor that for our chart there. I'm going with the potential of a failure there. This imbalance to me, it's too obvious in, the, in my head to, to think that that won't get filled. All right, pound dollar, day chart. And let's just go to the monthly chart. Uh, so weekly chart, so we can see the whole range of last year. And not too dissimilar to what I was discussing with you on the Euro, but uh, 62 areas here where these double tops is. Don't know what the exact number is because the numbers are overlapping. It's round about the 124.40 area, give or take a pip or two, okay? So we're about maybe 20 pips above that level at the moment. We actually swung to a downtrend and we've swung potentially to an uptrend. Now, I don't know whether this market can hold above this these highs though. And just want to point out where we are structurally within last year's trading range. All right. If we get a very, let's say we have a very negative week this week because of the interest rates, the job figures, and we clearly move back below, and this is just setting up the, the tone for the month. If we just get a negative week, clear negative week this week. Let's say we take out a couple of weeks of lows here. We could trade all the way back down to support down here this month quite easily, depending on what the US brings this week. All right, so at the moment, the critical area to watch are these double tops that was 124.48 with 10 pips above. All right, I want to have a look at my MACD um, pound daily chart. Divergence here on the daily. It's a lower top to where price is moving to a higher top. On the four hour chart there, not seeing any divergence in this most immediate price action here. For those that wanted to maybe call that top to that top, let's just see. Fraction of divergence from these from that top to that top, but there was price action in through here. So 
it's always questionable when I see a big distance between the tops, but most definitely the day chart showing you some divergence there. So having a breakdown after the rush up on Friday, I was thinking on Friday, is that a false move? Uh, last week I was discussing that, let's go to my other charts, that we were in some form of a range on the, on the day chart. Now I'm going to leave that, that top level in there. I'm going to get rid of that fib so we can just move down. You know, there's the top of the range. That's really the top of the range there. I was using that low there for my overall range. Move it to the four hour chart. This is still structurally in a day trend on the daily, but only just. It's very slowly creeping up. Highly range bound. Uh, we could most definitely come down to the bottom end of this range. All right. You can see starting to form lower tops and bottoms on the four hours. So at the moment, the most immediate momentum is to the downside intraday. And the line in the stand this week is 124.48. So let's go back to the weekly chart, these double tops here. The buyers have to keep the market above there now if we want to keep moving up. Not holding above there means the sellers are starting to get in control. And then we'll, what we'll see is if we can't hold above there, there's going to be a flip. I want 24.48, it's going to become resistance intraday, intraweek. All right, so that's the clear line. So if you're bullish on this pair at the moment, so of course the Bank of England is probably hawkish with interest rates at the moment as inflation is still going up, then you may still be looking to buy a dip. And you could be looking at, on the day chart here, there's a... Um, a low to high, get my fib. If you're bullish, hawkish, like the Bank of England is probably, then to the our chart, 62 level here, overlaps with the 124.48. You call it weekly support at the moment because we're above, but that is a critical level that needs to hold. So if you want to get long, that is the key level to get long at because that needs to hold for the buyers. You can see all these lows in here, little kind of inverse head and shoulder pattern forming in that area. So that could be support today to move up. But if we don't hold, we are probably heading down to the bottom end of the range. All right. So that's your buy potential there. Day chart range, 62% retracement, four hour support area there weekly support area. Let's just drop it down to the 15. Of course, at the moment, price action is bearish. It's actually formed a bit of a double top at the central pivot point. So today we can't really get above the central pivot point. From an intraday perspective, that's quite negative. We barely get above the central pivot point, which is kind of the average price of yesterday. And then we just simply are selling down then that is quite negative intraday, but 124.48 is the level to watch. If you see a setup to buy, it could be a trend line break to the upside, then you need to make a decision. From a seller's perspective, what is notable is yesterday we had a dive down below 125. And slightly the same. Markets might go back up before FOMC, softening US dollar. Maybe, yeah, it all depends what the news is going to bring from the rest of the US news. Yesterday, we had some positive US news, which was, it did actually show ISM manufacturing prices here rose, which is actually inflationary. So what the market took from that was that inflation is, you know, within that data set is growing. So that's what put a bit of a bid on the US dollar yesterday after that news item. Even though I think the ISM manufacturing PMI, if it's above 50, that's that's kind of you know bullish. If it's below 50, it's it's a weak, you know, they look at it as a weaker number, even though it's a more positive number. But that price is growing. So you know, we have coming up today the jolts job openings that could. 
that's positive. That may give a positive frame for the job figures on Friday. Okay. So we'll just have to wait and see. What I'm noticing in today is that we see that drop. This was just a perfect fill of an imbalance. See that imbalance drop yesterday? When we dropped below 125, where did we come back to today? It's almost a perfect level. All right, so rather negative above 125 at the moment. So any, you know, depending on what side of the market you want to play this pair at the moment, and there's always two sides to a market. What we are starting to see is that 125 is becoming heavy. So any, any movement back up, seven nine percent overlaps there with the 125. You know, that might be a nice, if we can get a rally, that might be another opportunity there to sell at the 125 level. If you're on the buy side, well, you know, you could be looking for yourself to buy to try to get back above 125. But if, you, if you're a buy, if you're going to the buy side, you want 125 to break back above a market to hold once more above 125. You can see what happened on Friday here. Pushed above 125, became support to move higher. But all these imbalances that got formed on Friday have all been filled. All right, so maybe it's time to buy, to move up, make a decision which side of the market you're on. I think we're getting some US dollar strength, that US dollar picture there on the dollar index. Let's just go back to dollar index. It's going to a higher top here. Now that doesn't bode well for those pairs to the US dollar at the moment, having some upside potential if this keeps moving up. So keep watching that dollar index, watching the correlate pairs, see what they're all doing together. All right, all right, let's head over to the Aussie pairs. Of course, Aussie pairs have been moving up. Now I'll put this line in here. Now this is the whole range that we've pretty much been in for the year. And um, what I'm looking at here as I analyze things is this is January's high, just here. This is February's high. This is March's high. And whilst the other yen pairs have been going to new highs, pound yen's put in a new high today, even though it's false breaking at the moment. Uh, Euro yen obviously is putting a new high. This has not put in a new high anywhere. You know, to put in a new high from that's last year's high up here. All right, so we're not we're not going to a new high this year at the moment. In fact, we've we've gone to a new low this year from last year's low, I believe, if my memory serves, or we got very close to it. We're nowhere near last year's high anyway. Right, now that I've said that, where was last year's high? Last year's high was there. What shows correct? What I meant was last year's low. Last year's low is down here, All right, so we haven't broken last year's low. I just know that we've been turning into a downtrend here clearly on the, on the monthly. But what I'm watching at the moment is even, this is well high up here. So this is January's high, this is February's high, this is March's high. So at the moment we're kind of false breaking March's high. All right, three months of highs there. This is, I'll just put it to the, to the left. That's a clear resistance area. There's no way I'm going to buy into that area, right? The only way I can buy is on a pullback to what I would class now as support. And probably the best line of support would be this, this area here. If the buyers are going to stay in command, look for a pullback, look for that area to be support to move up. All right, this is, you know, come Thursday, Wednesday last week, this was almost getting down to the low of the month. And then obviously the monetary policy from Japan has pushed that up. Then the monetary policy from Australia has pushed it even further up. All right, so, but, you know, there's the major range for the year at the moment. We're at the high end of the range. We could just stall at the top of the range here and then start to meander back down. All right, let's look at prices as, you know, if you're looking for something to buy, 
at the shops. You always like to get it at a discount. Does everybody do you like to go and pay full price? Yeah, we're getting up to full price for the year at the moment. So I'm not seeing a reason to sell at the moment. Buyers should look for a dip one or two days down. Support's there at 90.77 at the moment. Let's try it up. That will depend in my mind what the Aussie, Aussie dollar does as well. If that starts to move down quite nicely, then this pair may just well top up here. All right. As well, you know, from a FIB perspective to the upside here, there's the uptrend FIB. We're almost up to the 162 extension. You know, that's the profit zone. That's not the buy zone. That's not where you get into a trade. That's where you're taking profits on your bought position if you bought down here. All right, it's not where you start to open a trade. All right. And Slavi saying, can short Aussie again? Yeah, I mean, if you, like you're saying in your chat there, you could short here, stop above the current year's high. You could, you know, you need to get your stop above there. So if you can, you know, get away with 100 pips stop and you get your stop above the high, then... You know, that could be a good positional play. Uh, this this high here, which is March's high, 92.24. We're just barely holding at 92 at the moment. You know, over the next couple of trading days, we'll obviously have an imbalance in here. Some more imbalance down here. Let's just draw the imbalances in, and then we can see what happens over the course of, of, the, of the week. And... There's a whole bunch of imbalances. I'm not I'm just joining them all together. In that area, uh, any imbalance in here has been filled. Then we've got an imbalance on that candle. So, you know, if you just see a four, four hour downtrend start to form here, or, you know, from a four hour entry perspective that I teach, breaking that rejection candle is the entry stop above that high. But we may further get you know, another test up there. So you just see structure on the four hour chart change, or you see another rejection up there at 92.24. Then, you know, pulling the pin on the pip stop, get it above the yearly high. It's a high probability area. No, you know, it doesn't matter how much information you need before you pull the trigger. There's never a guarantee that whatever level you're trading at and in whatever direction you're using for your trend the trade is going to work. You have, but you have to, you know, this is very high priced at the moment for the Aussie. I'll we'll get to the New Zealand yen at the moment. And I think that's going to look very similar. It's trying to, it may be false breaking the weekly top. So this is obviously rushed up because the interest rates, you know, on a 50 minute chart here, you could look at 92.24. We've already done the range for the day. There's an imbalance there that needs to be filled. It's currently there. All right. If we come up here once more and we simply hold, you see a trend line break. The high probability is that we could hold there to at least fill that imbalance. All right. Which would offer, you know, if you could get in the market, let's say with a 30 pip stop up here. Back down to there, there's not, it was almost 90 pips. So it's just good risk, it's a good risk reward opportunity if you see a nice tight entry failure up there over the next 24 hours. All right, um, the other equation is we could still go higher and test that high. You know, as I said, we've got January's high, February's high, there's March's high. We could test these highs, hold, and then fail. All right, so obviously at the moment, this is quite aggressively to the upside with the news of another interest rate hike. But as that kind of dissipates, then we want to know what does price do up there? So we might need a couple of days to watch, unless you want to be aggressive up there. The problem you have at the moment is with the 
Job figures on Friday, the interest rate decisions coming out for the US. Now, this can be affected by the US interest rate decision for sure. Is do you want to be in a position at the do you want to open a new position with, with this news coming out? Do you want do you want to just step aside and wait for all the news to come out this week before you engage? All right, Aussie dollar. So earlier in the day, I was looking at this range, but of course we spiked up. I was looking at this 79% area here. Daily, this is my fire chart with daily resistance here. And of course we spiked up beyond that level. I did say watch as well the 67 level in Telegram. And we are below 67. So clearly we're not holding 67, but looking at this range, We'll hold it at 62, and this is the monthly range. Monthly range, we've just gone straight up to 62 level. Let's put the brakes on. Is that that could be the high of the month there? Yeah, the same thing happens. If I go to the New Zealand dollar. This was the interest rate decision on the New Zealand where they Marco was expecting 25 basis points. They, they did a 50. Rushed up. And then that was the high of the month. And we pretty much finished near the low of the month. All right. So is the same thing going to happen there on the Aussie? So 67, now that we're below 67, over the next 24 hours, 67 is the level to watch. Now, structurally, even though we've had that very aggressive move, the weekly trend here is down. I mean, we could be holding here. We have a lower bottom, lower top. We had a month down, finished close to the low of the month. Day trend, this is just lower top, lower bottom. This is just corrective, all right? This is where the next lower top can fall. Use that day chart range, you know, we're at the 62 level right now. You could be selling at the 62, stop above that high for a positional play. That's the monthly range or where we've topped at 62 today. Look left, this is a price point for a good two weeks back in March where we, where, we, where we kept failing at, right across there. It's worth putting that level in. Levels that have been highly traded in previous months, the support of resistance will most definitely hold the market in another month. Look at it. All right, so is that the top? Now over the next 24 hours, watch 67. We could still move back above 67, but what, what does the market start to paint? Do we start to see like on your 15 minute chart here? Do you start to see price? There's, there's the imbalance. It's not gonna surprise me one bit to see that imbalance get filled. All right, can this come back up to try to move above 67? There's last week's high to move down. You could be drawing a fib. Wherever that finishes, draw your fib in. 62% level at the moment is at last week's high. All right, up here is a great area to look to short because it's already starting to tell you that it's holding up there. Higher level, analysis i'm showing you why it's stopping there today all right and this imbalance here will probably get filled all right all right i'll just leave that for you to watch so over the next 24 hours you know further failures at 67 you know if you want a positional play you could be selling at 67 stop at 68 68 was pretty much last month's high Right, Azu, hi there. You just come in. All right, so those Aussie pairs made it very high levels for the month. And now where we've rushed up to at the moment could be the high of the month. You just need to make a decision for yourself. All right, we didn't cover the Euro pound. I want to talk about Euro pairs. This is trading perfectly to the range at the moment. Top of the day chart range up here at 88.65 is where we failed last week. Now we're down to daily support. There's your range. All right, now, if you're watching down there, you know my range trade. 
we draw a fibre across your range and let's call it there. I've actually drawn my fib the opposite way around. All right. I'll be going from that low there. There's, there's my range. That daily low to that daily, well, that daily high there. That's the range, really. Bit of a false break there. All right. I know there's been some false breaks in here, but this is this is the bottom of the range for me at the moment. So move to the fire chart. For those that don't know it, the bottom of the range you buy, you put your stop at the 127 hour below. If you did that yesterday, well, you're in profit now. Now, I like to get in, if I'm trading a range, I like to be in by the 79% level of my range, height of my range. The height of my range is, let me just kind of color it in a bit. There's the range, just there. All right, I like to be in, if I don't take it down here, I like to be in by the 79% level. So I've still got, so I'm giving away 20% of the range to potentially trade back up to the top of the range. So I've got, I'm giving away 20% for the possibility of 80% of the range left. That's profit, that's one to four. It's at least one to three in terms of risk reward when you start to factor in the spread and you're putting your stop below here a little bit, okay? So if we are trading back up to the top of the range, then we have a four hour uptrend here, just drag a fib across the current range and look to buy a 62, 79% retracement. If this was to dip back down to the 79% level of how I've got the fib drawn across that range, you could simply look for price to come to the 79 level, buy, all right, buy the 79 level, And then, oh, if this thing will copy, put your stop below here. That creates your risk reward of one to four approximately to trade up to the top of the range. All right. And Slive Bank of England interest rate decision later in the week. Is that this week or is it the next week? I didn't see the Bank of England one on the thing. Where's the Bank of England interest rate decision? Is that the week after? I don't see it there. It's usually on the Thursday. I don't see it in there. It's the week after. Still got a week to go yet. It's not until May the 11th. All right. So it's not this week. It's next week. All right. Yep, it can get, it can get confusing. Sometimes the, the UK interest rate is on the same Thursday as the Eurozone interest rate. So yeah, you've got to keep on top of things. All right, so there may well be a you know the opportunity there just to trade back up the range. It's very range bound. It's holding nicely to the range. I, I don't personally trade the Euro pound, but I can quite clearly see that it is holding to the range there. All right. Now, there are, there are actually, I'm just gonna tidy this up and just discuss, because whilst the range that I'm showing you is that colored area, there is actually a lower range as well. There's weekly support down here. We could come down to the lower end as well. If, if that was the case, that would mess up the trade, but you, know, you just have to trade what you see. We could come down to the lower end where weekly support is. So if the first bottom of the range doesn't hold, the next level for the range is down here at 87.22. All right, but you know, you have to make a decision about how you want to trade. I might just put my fit back in across that range. That's where it was approximately. And we can see how that looks on Thursday. All right, let's get into the news in yet. All right, so while this is going ballistically north, it is not holding at this weekly top. So when we put in this weekly top here, this is the day chart, but let's 
Now, if you want to go to the weekly chart, there's a weekly top there that we false broke, and then we came all the way down. Now we're doing the exact same thing to that top there. Are we false breaking that? We could false break that to come all the way down. And what it would do, if you look at the major range, the major range is from this high to that low. That's your monthly range here. All right. Where we're at, go to the weekly chart, 62 level, 85.20, which coincides with that top. So where we're false breaking at the moment is 62% level over that's perfectly without weekly top, which was a false break of this area. So in my analysis this morning in the video, I said, watch this area. This is a weekly year, two weekly tops. What's going to happen in there? I said, you know, just give it a couple of days just to see what it does. It starts to show you a reversal. Now it's rejecting at the moment, but you know, it's still half a day to go at the moment. And you know, we could be going all the way up to top of the range at the moment. We know this, the yen's been getting weaker, but when you see these are very streaky moves, they often then come back. So we're at a known level of resistance where, you know, when we, when we were down here, if you go and watch the webinar recordings, I said, watch this area to sell, trade it down. So the same thing, watch this area to sell, to trade back down. All right, we'll be on the 127 extension of this upward move. You can call that corrective. All right, that's the profit taking area of any move. That's not where you want to buy. Now, if you're looking for a buy in this pair, you would want this to move, pull back to this area of support at 83, 86, hold, and then look for your opportunity to buy. All right. So, you know, when you contrast Aussie yen to the New Zealand yen, uh, Slavia, you're talking about maybe shortly Aussie yen. You know, you want to see this, you want to see both these pairs doing the same thing. You know, highly correlated pairs to both start to sell off. You've got, you got a chance of being right there. So for our chart at the moment, there's a four hour candle entry there, breaking the low stop above the high. If you want to be really aggressive, you can see the imbalance. Those that may have done you know, a lot of work on imbalances, there's your imbalance at the moment. They will often get filled. We covered that in a webinar last week, wasn't it? So will, will all that imbalance get filled? Trade it down on the five pits while I'm talking. All right, 50 minute chart. And over the next day, you know, this resistance area, 84.91 up to 85.20. You can just wait for this to move below, below it. And then does it come up to 85 and reject? Look for your opportunity to sell. All right, let price tell you that it's wanting to reverse. At the moment, it could hold at 85 and move back up. But if it starts to drop, if it can't hold the area, it's telling you that it's weak in that area. All right, so just let price tell you. All right. Now, so just watch that. I mean, in the day, if you want to get really aggressive, you could watch for a move back up to retest 85.20 and look for a tight trend line break. This is clearly a resistance area that may offer a high probability, excellent risk reward opportunity. All right, so just keep watching for a reversal there. What catch it, you know, what, what does that need to do for you to say it's reversing and to short it? It's not the area to buy. It's definitely, if you're long, it's the area to take profit at and then wait to make a decision. Do you want to buy a pullback or do you want to short at the resistance area? All right, New Zealand dollar. Now to the weekly chart. Oh, it's just in a monthly chart. There's last month's candle, negative. Closing below what is this weekly low here, which is 61.91. A 
Last two trading days, we're testing 61.91. We are trading above it, but we're below it right this minute, 61.87. So that level is starting to be notably a resistance level for the market. Your day chart was, it turned up here. You can see yesterday's candle rejected. And if we have two rejection candles there today, that's telling you price doesn't want to really get and hold above 62. All right, that's really the factoring thing. 62, you know, the market's looking at 62. It's asking the market the question. Is 62 the high price this month? All right. Can't hold the high of yesterday. There's another high here. Any, any, you know, any further retest and weakness at 62 is just an opportunity to look for a trade setup to sell. You know, we, we could go higher this week, obviously, with the, the figures coming out. It's worth mapping out. That's the range of last month. I already discussed that was the interest rate decision. They rose interest rates by half a percent, an extra 25 base points, and you had a 62% retracement of that high to low and then sold off. But it's worth mapping out the range for the month because the uh, interest rate decision coming out from FMC, US, and the job figures, we could move up to 62 level, 79 level of last month's trading range. You know, up there with that high, the 79% level would be a great level to watch. But we may never get there, but it's worth, you know, doing your work and just seeing well, what, you know, if price got there, I already know what I want to do up there rather than scrambling and going, well, price is rushing up. What am I going to be doing? Or, I already know. I already know that's a great level. All right. I've done my work ahead of time. But at the moment, seemingly we can't hold above 62. All right. So. We're already seeing, we've already seen, you could draw, you could have drawn a trend line up through here in some form or fashion, or even a tighter one. To look for a failure, tighter one up through there. All right. It's all telling you there at the moment, a lower top that yesterday's high, we're failing at yesterday's high, and we want to trade back below weekly resistance. The moment now we might get another rush up at 62 when the us news comes out later so you know if you're not in i will be watching up there at 62. you know just keep dragging fib down that range look for look to see where the rally point comes if you get a ride there's a 79 percent level and the 62 level at the moment do you see a little rally up there on that fib to start to hold up there at 62 for a move down. All right, dollar cad. Must have been talking a lot today because we have still got two pairs to go and it's eight o'clock. All right. Just from a day chart perspective, we're in an uptrend. Week chart perspective. Higher bottom, higher top. That's been like a 79% pullback. It's getting on its back foot to put another leg up. All right, there's 79% area. All right. Whilst we had a very negative day on Friday, we're potentially here putting in a, in a breaking above yesterday's high today, which we're doing right now. That's starting to form a higher bottom here. We're wanting to be above this area of day, day chart support today. Uh, this is probably coming up and maybe coming up much, much higher in line with that weekly trends. All right. Looks like we're forming a higher bottom there. For our trends, just starting to turn up. I mean, you could be getting in now, putting your stop below here. It's going to cost you. Sixty sixty five pips, and maybe you could wait for a little bit of intraday pullback, 
Uh, you know, if you want to be really clever with these stops, see the, these lows here, couldn't get below these lows here. You could just put your stop below here. That would be a very, very good area to put your stop. Buying the break at that high, stop below there, you're going to be risking about 80 pips probably. But the reward, if that day chart trend continues, is we could be coming back up to that weekly top up there at 138.61. You know, that was the last large move up. We could be doing a similar kind of affair. All right. Day supports showing support today. So you have to make a decision. Do you want to trade that to the upside? I'll just keep my fib on there. Now on the fire charts, you could, you know, if, you don't, if you don't want to risk too much, you could wait for this to move up and pull back. So if you drop to the 15 minute chart, this low here, you drag a fib up, wherever it finishes and you look to buy a pullback. We could still pull back once more to 135.53 if the market really wants to, but it's starting to maybe show that it wants to be above 135.53 day supports. So maybe the market will offer a pullback to the area. All right, measure the pullback. All right, let's have a look at gold, which you know, I've been saying on the monthly charts, are we, we rejected up there last month. We're still in the downtrend on the monthly chart there. We're gonna put it in a lower top. Weekly trend is just holding. Horrible price action up here at the moment. It is holding at that weekly resistance area at 1998, so pretty much the 2000 level. Anything above 2000 is a very high price for gold there at the moment. Unless we get a fundamental shift that can break that level, we're probably selling down from that level. All right, very flat and sideways. Um, you know, drawing the range, which is difficult because you've got lower tops and higher bottoms at the moment. I would just wait for a clear trend break one way or the other before I traded that. And in my mind, we're at the top. So I would be waiting for a break, a break to the downside, then look to sell a rally. Right, at the moment, this is just chop, chop, chop. I would look at something else to trade at the moment. That fire chart there, you can see it's just chop, chop, chop. You know, you'd have to look at, if I color in the area of the top, maybe there's your top area. There's your support area. That might be too high up there. All right, you know, Look to be buying here on a setup, whatever your setup is on the lower time frame. Look to be selling up here at the top. In the middle, it's just chop, chop, chop. All right, you don't want to be, you don't want to be anywhere near the middle. Trade the outer ranges. You know, that's just terrible at the moment. Just look at something else. All right, um, Azir, you want me to look at the, the Aussie CAD, which I know is shooting up. Aussie CAD. Probably putting in a higher bottom here on the, on the monthly. 62% retracements. It is, the weekly is in opposition to the monthly, but it, it can often be the case when we're at the key area. All right. The day chart, if this shows you an uptrend, which it's not quite doing yet, maybe there's a slightly higher bottom there, but if we can move up, up you know, and then look for look for the structured pullback. Look for the pullback because if we don't get that break, so then we can look for that kind of price action. What may happen here is because the weekly trend is still down, is we could just come up to this high area here, hold, and fail. In fact, you know, sorry, day chart. There's a top here. We're in, we're in an area of resistance here at the moment. And we could quite simply hold here. 
trade back down because this is way overextended. You know, for a day chart trend to unfold, we have to take out this high. If we can't, we could simply trade back down. This imbalance that we formed today could, you know, quite clearly be filled to the downside. It would be great if price action could, first of all, clear above that top before then wanting to pull back. And then you could draw a fib, maybe across the range like that, and then look for a pullback. Whilst ever we can't take that top out, this could be a false move to the upside. So doesn't look to me that engaging. It's at the top of its run at the moment. So I don't know what you're, are you thinking of shorting it or are you long already? What are you thinking of doing? All right, so you're long. Yeah, I mean, it can most definitely be developing into a day chart uptrend, but if you can't take out that high, you're going to have to say, okay, well, it's the trend is still uncertain and we could move back down to the bottom because your monthly trend is clearly up, but then the weekly trend is clearly down. So you have some opposition there. So, and the daily is mixed. So, you know, we can quite clearly see where support is, but price could come back down to support once more. And on, you know, from a four hour chart perspective, there's there's a kind of resistance area up there. All right, so, and that imbalance most definitely could get filled if you understand the imbalances. So I'd say, you know, lock in some profit and hopefully it can keep breaking north. That would be the, you know, can the uptrend unfold? I would say you need to, have your fingers crossed for that before the news. All right, everybody, run over a little bit of time there, but a lot to talk about on the market and levels that what the market's been doing and you know what to watch out for over the next few trading days and how things can develop. Coming up tomorrow, we are doing what are we doing tomorrow? We are doing let's go back to my PowerPoint. We are just reviewing last month. So we're going to look at the patterns that formed last month for review. What can you learn from last month's price action? So that you can maybe put that to, put to play in future months, right? That's what's coming up tomorrow. And I always try not to touch on what the market's doing in the live environment, because it's just a review of what has been going on, but we might, and I might discuss some live, some live price action maybe, but it's really a review. So that you can take snapshots, maybe get a clear sense of you know what you thought what you thought may have been happening, but then you review at the end of the month could be totally different to what actually unfolded, and then can you learn from that? All right, all right, everybody. Thanks very much for your questions. Thanks for your attendance. So we appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you later in the week if you have the time. Obviously, later tomorrow if you have the time. Look forward to seeing you. Thanks very much.